to it with the trailer for Path of Exile Necropolis. Okay. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Get your bow chains ready, boys. Get your bow chains ready. This is what I'm talking about. PE2. Let's go, PE1. Cold flesh, dirt, maggots, and ghosts. Our job is to keep them where they belong. It's your first night, so you'll need this. A ghostly lantern for ghastly tinkering. Oh, oh! Huh? The fuck was that? Oh, shit! You learn to peer into the souls of the dead. You learn how to twist them. Meet me in the necropolis. You can pilfer shiny things from a corpse, but you can pilfer glorious things from a soul. What the fuck? I need a grave digger. Do you make like insane custom items? Well, I need to pause so bad, dude. Here's 17 maps, Pog. Oh, dude! The two time passive tree! New penultimate bosses? Oh, yeah! Okay! More transmigrant gems, I'll allow it. Oh, shit. I mean, oh my god. The job's hard. Seven out of nine? Seven out of twelve? Good. How many bosses? How many? What do you say? How many bosses? Oh, baby! In the Necropolis League, you will encounter Undertaker Aramor, a man collecting the scattered spirits of the Eternal Empire for a mysterious purpose. These spirits have begun to haunt the monsters of Rayclast, unleashing their ancient fury and sorrow onto the world. The Undertaker will provide you with the Lantern of Aramor, a powerful family heirloom which can illuminate the wrathful spirits haunting monsters throughout Rayclast. With it, the Undertaker hopes to employ you to rid Rayclast of this menace, and further his cryptic cause. The Lantern can be used when entering any new area. When peering through it, you can examine the spirits haunting that area. The Lantern also allows you to manipulate them, letting you configure which monsters are affected by which mods. It would be wise to take your time with your decisions here, for the spirits are not forgiving. Ah, oh, I see. When peering through the lantern, you can also see extra details about the packs of monsters in the area. Rowers here are considered common, whereas the water elementals are more scarce. If you oh, want things to be easier, that. you can put the more difficult spirits on the elementals, which you'll encounter less often. Put We've tried to make sure that, that by engaging with the lantern, you are able to intelligently control the difficulty in the Necropolis League. The spirits come in a number of forms which represent the danger they pose. For example here, the infested vultures are servant haunted, causing them to deal a small amount of increased damage. But the voles vanguard are noble haunted, causing them to deal a large amount of increased damage. <sighs> As you reach higher level areas in Rayclast, the tear and number of spirits that are haunting monsters will generally increase. Your game knowledge can help you here. If you're aware of the composition of a monster pack, this means certain mods will be easier to manage. For example, the mod that increases a pack's damage for every monster killed has no effect on packs with a single monster, like a Devourer. However, if we found a spirit that makes the strongest monster in a pack deal 100% more damage, well, I'm going to avoid the Devourer. You might have noticed that the Lantern of Aramor provides other useful information, such as the types of abilities monsters use, or the damage types they deal. So for those who are less familiar with how these monsters work, this can be a great way to learn what you're up against. Oh, fuck. The spirits are constantly moving throughout Rayclast, so if you are finding a campaign area too difficult, you can just wait a few minutes and peer through the Lantern again to see what's changed. Of course, powerful spirits beget powerful rewards. There are two reasons why you might want to face a challenge now and then. Firstly, 
Not all the spirits are malicious. Sometimes the monsters aren't haunted at all, but are instead devoted. These can grant basic rewards like increased experience, or bigger rewards like spawning the Nameless Seer, an NPC that will grant you a single unique item after you defeat all of the packs affected by that spirit. Are we going to fish over maps with this? The more haunted monsters you defeat in the previous area before using the lantern, the more likely the devoted monsters will appear in the next area. Ah. Monsters haunted by higher tier spirits will increase the chance of the devoted appearing even more, meaning that sometimes it's worth putting the hardest modifier possible on very common monsters, if you're brave enough. Again, we've tried hard here to allow players to customize the danger and rewards as much as they can. Aramor is an undertaker, and you can probably guess what we're taking to him. The second main reward from the Necropolis League is monsters with unresolved anguish. Once slain, their corpses need extra care from the Undertaker, and he will offer to take them back to his necropolis and store them in the mall. Take everything, bro. Take it. Take all of it. Time to earn your keep. When you are ready, you can visit the morgue to view the monsters you have collected, oh, and fuck. then get to work burying them in one of many graves oh, in Aramor Cemetery. Christ, what the For fuck? example, we will bury this Katava's Herald. Aramor's mysterious soul experiments can coalesce powerful items. Here I've chosen to create a pair of boats. Of Lunaris, heal your pains and aid this soldier so that you may Just like harvest crafting. These boots are useful for my character, but aren't exactly what I hoped for. And this is where the Necropolis crafting system really shines. You'll have noticed that the corpse we collected earlier had a crafting effect on it. In fact, all collected corpses oh, do. Oh god. If you bury multiple corpses in the cemetery, all adjacent corpses can be exercised at once to create one item. All of the crafting effects on those corpses will apply to that same item. What? This allows you to have either one or many different crafting projects ongoing in the cemetery. For example, next time I try to create boats, I could bury corpses that increase the chance of getting move speed modifiers. To go further, I could use these to generate higher tier modifiers. Then I could try to bias it towards being an evasion pair with this. Finally, I'll apply some crafting effects that improve the probability of getting good rolls. Now, let's craft our item and see what we get. Jesus Christ. This is going to be like deterministic at a certain point. As you can see now, we have God a much damn. better pair of boots, forged from the souls what of the our enemies. Fuck? You could even use the entire cemetery to craft <laughs> one item. There is always something you can do to try and ensure your item will be show as it, best bro. as it can be. Show it, show the item. We hope to see some really crazy grave crafts. No, if you are lucky, you. you might have corpses fuck with you. meta crafting modifiers. These can be buried to manipulate your crafting projects in more drastic this ways. Is gonna be, this is this old one arms. increases the potency of all crafting effects of adjacent undead corpses. Another meta crafting modifier gives a chance to drop an extra item from your craft, with all the same crafting outcomes applied. All you have to do is bury a lot of undead monsters. Fucking hell. May the ferocity of Throldana free you of your anguish and aid this soldier so that you may shield them from harm. There it is. You can also craft new unique items exclusive to the Necropolis League using this system. As you explore Rayclast, you might find the corpses of famous Eternal Empire families. And when you bury an entire family together and exorcise them, they will thank you with a unique specific to their lineage. The of the oh fuck. They're, they're labeled, right? For example, the Navalius oh, Inheritance shit. Belt. I'll give you a moment to check that out. Plus generation, plus generation, 2% flash. You can use other corpses alongside them to grant implicit mods, manipulate the values of explicit mods, and more. Ooh. In this case, with the Parandus Pact, you can even change the modifiers it generates. This unique is a jewel which adds extra stats to passive skills in a radius when socketed into the passive skill tree. The stats it adds are randomly generated, but you can bias it towards a specific type by using other crafting effects, such as this one, which increases the chance of getting life modifiers. 
Let's see what we get. The sand life? Life region? Damn. We didn't get it this time. I guess we're gonna have to go and collect more corpses. Shit, bro. Of course, you can trade the corpses away to other players. All you need to do is purchase empty coffins from The Undertaker and use them on your corpses in the morgue, which will itemize them. Oof, looks dog shit, bro. It looks as amazing. Is there a Another corpse item limit? in the Necropolis League that you can find are Embers of the All Flame. These are monster spirits that remain living in the All Flame, a powerful ancient artifact of Rayclast. And you can set them free by placing them in the Lantern of Aramor and defeating them. These embers drop throughout Rayclast as itemized packs of monsters. You are able to use these packs to replace the packs in areas. For example, we have found this all flame ember of Tarfor. We can now go to enter the next area and replace one of the monster packs in here. You can see we have also gotten one of the devoted modifiers to appear. We can pair up the Karui mm, ancestors with this modifier, I see. making them even more rewarding. So he's gonna get two of a Let's good go ahead type. and replace the tentacle miscreations. With two, yeah. However, when replacing packs, you want to double check their density, as the new pack will inherit the density of the replaced pack. The Karui ancestors we have now added to our area can even drop basic variations of tattoos. So there'll be meta monsters. If you aren't aware, this is an item type from the Trial of the Ancestors League, which can be used on passive skills to change what they do. Wait, there what? are many different types of itemized packs. The you can fuck? find Breach and Legion monsters that drop splinters, untainted packs that provide insane amounts of experience, oh, shit. and even simple frogs, which can be used to replace difficult monsters to make life easier. And of course, <laughs> these packs Ember monsters can be raised as specters too. Oh, Finally, God. let's discuss how this league works in in-game maps. Each in-game map will allow you to manipulate it using the lantern on the map device UI. However, instead of randomly cycling every few minutes, it is fixed to that map. I was gonna say, you just spam Once you view the map through the lantern, you cannot remove it from the map device. So you can't trade that map away now that you've seen it is too difficult for you. Or has monsters in it that you'd rather avoid. Like porcupines. Ugh. We're also trying something new this time around. During the Necropolis League, there will be support for the League on the Atlas Passive Tree. Multiple clusters will be there, allowing you to enhance the gameplay, customize it, and even change its behavior in meaningful crazy. ways. That's... One way that you can change the crafting in a meaningful way is with the Prospero's Wager Keystone. With this keystone, all the monsters with unresolved anguish come with this crafting modifier, which causes them to generate a random craft when buried. This means instead of pre-planning your crafts, you have to adapt to them on the fly to get the best results. These clusters will not be available in Standard League. That seems dog shit, bro, what? In 3.24, we've made a plethora of changes to the endgame. We've introducing new bosses, adding another tier of maps, and streamlining the Atlas. I gave RNG, right? The most difficult and most rewarding content in Path of Exile can be found in Uber Pinnacle bosses, such as the Maven and the Searing Exile. Kill, Kill him. Currently, the only way to access these bosses is by allocating specific keystones on the it's Atlas Passive shit. Tree. Stupid. While this system offers a nice element of oh. control, it causes a problem. Yeah. Rewards and access to the non-Uber variants are now economically priced around the is. rewards of the Uber fights. This means it New is invites. wasteful to run the non-Uber variants instead of simply Uber selling invites, them. Guys. Another problem that we noticed is the difficulty jump between the Pinnacle and Uber Pinnacle content was relatively large. And there wasn't obvious content that could bridge this gap. Many players would give up on their characters before being able to defeat the Uber Pinnacle bosses. In 324, we will be making some changes to this. We are removing the keystones that give access to the Uber Pinnacle bosses from the Atlas Tree, and instead we'll be adding a new set of fragments that give you access to this content. Shit, Where do you get these fragments? Is. We are adding a new tier of maps, tier 17 maps, oh, which not Lanta. only give you access to the Uber Pinnacle content, but also test your characters in new ways. They feature a new set of bosses, Uber monsters, and a new tier of modifiers that can roll on the maps. Oh, fucking hell. There are five new tier 17 maps in total, with some surprising boss fights at the end. We'll look at a couple today, and the rest you'll have to discover for yourself. First, we have the Citadel map. This map contains an ancient Kalgurin citadel. 
You will encounter oh. many expedition boxes as the signature packs throughout the map. That At the really end, good. you will fight Uber Uhtred. Oh shit! This That's... is a version of a boss from Expedition League, with all its abilities and mechanics enhanced. Uber Uhtred will even be able to summon two other expedition bosses to aid it during the fight. Ha oh, fuck off, Ken. Secondly, we have the Fortress map. This map is an impregnable fortress, guarded by monsters from the Heist League. Do these maps have At roles? the end, you will oh, encounter do, an right? Uber version of The Unbreakable. Again, it has enhanced abilities and mechanics you'll have to learn and overcome. Each of the Tier 17 map bosses has a chance to drop a unique item, allowing for some target farming. However, these aren't entirely new unique items. Instead, we've taken other unique items, removing them from the core drop pool, and rebalancing them to fit here. Oh. One example is this reworked version of Wraith Lord. Let's take the one? It has four Abyss Sockets, and allows you to summon an additional Spectre for each Ghastly Eye Jewel socketed into it. Another example is Mana Storm. This has been rebalanced to grant a lot more damage than before, alongside some more impactful Mana stats. If you can get lucky rolls. Jesus Christ. Alongside adding tier 17 maps, we have also changed the Uber Pinnacle bosses to have completely distinct unique item drop pools from their non Uber counterparts. This That's means cool. there is a reason to farm both versions. Let's take a look at the Shaper versus the Uber Shaper. The Shaper will drop these uniques Voidwalker, Shaper's Touch, Solstice oh, Vigil, so and Dying Sun. Now. Whereas the Uber Shaper will drop these. Echoes of Creation, Sublime this. Vision, Entropic Devastation, Starforge, and a new unique belt called the Tides of Time. Okay. Another example of a new unique is this helmet from the Uber Eater of Worlds, Ravenous Passion, and these gloves from the Uber Searing Exarch, the Celestial Brace. I need two more time to read them, Each bro. of the Uber Pinnacle bosses has a new unique added to their drop pools. Hey, Max Boy, bro. We have identified another major problem with the endgame we'd like to address. With every expansion added to the game, we have been increasing the complexity of running maps. It's at the point now where a player must repeatedly execute a large sequence of steps to run maps efficiently. It can be easy to forget critical steps, and it can be tiring to repeat them. Yep. To solve this, like we are removing some systems, and stuff. but are keeping what is good about them. The two main systems we've removed are Sextants are, and the God. Master Mission Selector. It is not our intention to dull the content, however. We have completely reworked Scarabs to include most of the options that were previously covered thank by those mechanics, God. and many, many more. Let's I take a look at some of them. Commonly, you might find Scarabs that simply grant access to different content. Here, we have a Scarab that causes Beyond Demons to spawn when Ooh. killing monsters in your maps. And here, we have one that adds a Delirium okay. Mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Each better. type this of is Scarab now has multiple versions. So if you want to fully invest in a type of content, you can do so. Here's a suite of Ultimatum Scarabs. This Ultimatum Scarab adds an Ultimatum Encounter to a map. This Ultimatum Scarab of Bribing then causes that Ultimatum Encounter to grant better rewards and its monsters to yield more experience. This ultimatum scarab of dueling will cause that ultimatum encounter to always guarantee the trial master boss fight at the end, assuming you can survive through all the rounds. This ultimatum scarab of catalyzing will cause all rewards from that ultimatum to be catalysts instead of other rewards. And finally, this ultimatum scarab of inscription will cause all catalyst rewards from that ultimatum Bro, to be that inscribed ultimatums be? instead. Holy fuck. There are plenty of others. If you enjoy divination card farming, you might want to use these. This divination scarab of curation causes more divination cards to drop for each different favored map you have selected. But it also causes whatever map you're running to only drop divination cards from those favored maps. So if you want to try and aim for your mage blood and don't want to just farm Crimson Temple, then this scarab is for you. That's kind of based. This divination scarab of completion causes your divination cards to have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead for <laughs> maximum dopamine. <laughs> Basically, okay. there are now just what? a lot of scarabs. You might have also noticed that they no longer have tears. Scarabs are now all world drops. You can get them anywhere. Some might be rarer than others, but the intention is that there'll be a lot more options than before and more interesting combinations to consider. If you want to target specific scarabs, Betrayal has been updated to include most of them, and you will need to relearn which ones come from where. 
While this system is allowing you to heavily invest in one type of content, it is reducing your capacity for variety. To address this, we have massively increased access to content on the Atlas Passive Tree. You are now able to reliably get different leagues like Breach or Legion like from better. just your I, Atlas I don't even like scared, I'm gonna be honest. Regarding Master Missions, content such as Incursion, Delve, Betrayal, and Bestiary, these two are now accessible with Scarabs and have more reliable investment options on the tree. Mm. Not only this, you can now get Jun, Einhar, Alva, and Nico to appear together in the same map. We have also removed some keystones such as Wandering Path, Grand Design, oh. and Growing Hordes, oh. but have added some new ones too. For example, Unwavering Vision, Getting us kind of, uh, Back to basics. And okay. thorough exploration. Okay. okay, wisps. And we have added some new notables, such Dude. as Remarkable Relics, which allows you to try find better variants of scarabs. Mounting modifiers, which increases the values of modifiers on your maps by 2% for each explicit modifier. And Tainted Carapaces which is just one in a set of many that allow you to target Beyond farm specific Andes. types of Holy scarabs. Holy shit. These are just a few of the many new notables that can be found on the Atlas Passive skill tree. Lastly, we are giving you more flexibility in what content you want to run in the endgame. In 324, you can now have multiple copies of the Atlas tree, which can be swapped between maps at your leisure. You can unlock up to two extra trees for a total of three Holy by progressing through the endgame and completing core content. What? When you open a map, you can select which tree you would like to use. For a given league, you'll never feel constrained to playing your endgame a single way. You can also label your trees to easily identify which one has which content. <laughs> oh, me, Strat, that's like the... With all this combined, we're hoping to see new endgame strategies shine through. I While like this. playing through this the campaign SSF, in 324, guys. you'll notice a myriad of small improvements and surprises. The fundamentals of the campaign are still intact, but we've scattered fun encounters and secrets throughout Rayclast. What? The Dweller of the Deep has been trapped. What are these ritual shrines doing in the Northern Forest? And why are they giving me omens? What the fuck? This oh. device looks safe. This I is... should definitely use this on my items. This is fun. Okay, this there is cool. There are plenty cool. more encounters Dude, to discover. Dude, Tyson Columbus be freaking out we'll right now. We'll continue adding more surprises in future releases. So keep an eye out. The speedrunning meta has been destroyed. In the previous expansion, 323, we released a large number of transfigured skill this gems. New speedrunning meta. These are alternate versions of existing skill gems that function in very different ways, allowing for more build and gameplay variety. At the time, our aspirations were higher than we could achieve. We planned more gems than we could make. So, in 324, we're adding another set of transfigured gems that we have now finished. How High many? Shot, Incinerate, Artillery Ballista, Tornado, Elemental Hit, Kinetic okay. Blast, Poisonous Concoction, and lastly, Summon Holy Relic. Ah, oh, fuck. Hopefully those of with, you who with, missed with your favorite lights. skill having with a lights. transfigured yeah. variant will get that here. We will certainly be adding more of these in the future, especially for skills that are missing them still. Of course, we'll also be doing a balance pass on the existing transfigured gems. One of the main ones we're looking at is Henetic Bolt of Fragmentation. As a result of this change, it is clear that the endgame potential of the Wanda archetype really starts to suffer, mostly in the single target damage department. Due to this, we've added the new support gem, Sacred Wisps. This support gem causes supported skills to create two attached wisps for a duration. With these wisps, whenever you attack, they have a chance to also use the same skill, if you have enemies in your presence. What? And if there are any rare or unique enemies, they will always use the skill. That's OP. That leads us into all the other quality of life features we're introducing in 324. And there's a shitload of them. Pog? Many of these have been revealed in teasers already, but here's a quick summary. We've added the automation and call to arms skill gems for being able to trigger instant skills and war cries without having to bind them to left click. You can now hold down control and left click to automatically apply certain currency orbs until they achieve the yeah, desired I result for that. or you run out. For example, you can hold down fusings until you reach maximum links. 
you will be able to control shift click currency into a trade window to automatically move all Energy of that currency bank, right? at once from your inventory. Detonate Dead now has clearer Bro. telegraphing effects. Bro, tell me about scour chance. Scout when chance. harvest crafting, the item hover will always be visible, so you no longer have to mouse back and what forth to chance? see the results of your crafts. When you use a Val Orb on a map, the map no longer has a chance to become unidentified. Yep. Instead, it adds a new implicit. Oh. We've created a set of implicits that affect the areas in fun ways. Related to that, corrupted and mirrored items can now be identified. What? Breach hands now open upon approach, and no longer need to be clicked. Upgrades to Pantheon powers now apply to all characters in a league. Pugent. You no longer need to grind divine vessels on each new character. With Harvest Crafting, you can now re-roll Uber Elder Fragments. Fragments dropped by the Shaper cannot be re-rolled into fragments dropped by the Elder, and vice versa. Regarding Betrayal, we're removing Ashling's crafting bench as a reward. Instead, Veiled Orbs now perform that function. I, mean, I was already doing that shit anyway. They remove a mod I mean, and replace it with a Veiled mod. Just a bit up, little upgrade These orbs me. now drop from Katarina and are no longer a world drop. Flasks can now be corrupted by Val Orbs giving random minus 10 Get to plus 10 quality. Minus. Get fucked. The capability to add extra quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from Betrayal. The Betrayal bench craft Ooh, that converts an, an amulet actually. to a talisman has been moved to bestiary, and thus can be traded. Like Maven this. invitations no longer drop. Instead, when you have completed witnessing all bosses required to go to the Maven's arena, you can just talk to Kerak, and he'll open a map device window with the invitation already in there. Ready to be rolled. Valdo's maps that granted invitations now give scarabs. No more having to waste guardian kills to try get invitations to drop. Next up, we're going to be talking about our new League supporter packs. Today, we're launching two new series of supporter packs, the Solar and Eldritch packs. Each tier contains the full pack's face value and points, alongside several exclusive microtransactions. These packs are only available for the duration of the Necropolis League, and will leave the store forever when it ends. As always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic, and do not affect your character's power or progression in any way. The Solar series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. The Cosmos Weapon Effect adorns your weapon with stars. Hitting enemies causes cosmic energy to spill out into the area around them. The Radiant Orb of Chance Extra Effect projects the outcome of items you've used an Orb of Chance on above your head. Remember Bro. to congratulate other exiles in town if you see them chance a powerful unique item. Are you going to fix Chance Orbs though? Are you going to fix Chance Orbs though? Shine boldly with the Solar Knight Armor Set. The, the power of the sun radiates from your body, getting more and more intense as you use skills and emitting solar flares as you run. With the supernova level up extra effect, the dead will be raised from the ground around you before being obliterated and turned to ash by an epic supernova whenever you level up. Pog. This one is my personal Yo, favorite. What the, fuck the cosmic is turtle that? hideout lets you travel the infinite expanse of the cosmos. Okay, I'm gonna buy the this back now. Of a colossal turtle. I'm gonna buy this now for the turtle. God damn Carry it. the weight of the sun on your back with the solar guardian back attachment. Witness it grow larger and larger as the energy of slain enemies that, is funneled into it. When it reaches its maximum size, it goes supernova and turns into a black hole, forever drifting throughout raid class. It just creates like visual clutter on the your screen. The Eldritch Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. Are you wondering if we move the stash in the latest patch? Don't be fooled because with the Mimic Stash Pet, players can transform into an image of a stash when in a town or hideout and scare unsuspecting exiles. <laughs> This pet follows behind you with its terrifying hand walking the rest of the time. What the fuck is this? The Shaper's Slam Finisher effect sends slain unique enemies into a final <laughs> abyss of unending <laughs> darkness. The Eldritch Bog. Hunger Armor Set contains a beast that demands you to feed it by embracing your bloodlust. Watch it grow in power the more you kill until it bursts from the shell of the helmet. Are you able to satiate its hunger? The seed within the Corrupted Growth map device expands its grasp on your hideout the more maps you complete on your atlas. Ugh. Equipping the Headhunter Ugh. character effect causes skulls of slain rare enemies to whirl around you like trophies. They become enraged when you are near a rare enemy you are yet to kill, wishing for them to join your collection. 
Walker. Witness a reality where the struggle didn't exist, allowing the Eldritch Horrors to settle their own conflicts with the Eldritch Horror Apparition effect. Which of the Eater of Worlds or Searing Exarch do you oh, think will win? Oh, this is Gamber. These packs are now available for purchase on both PC and console, and will remain so during Path of Exile Necropolis. Meanwhile, the Shade and Disciple packs leave the store forever at the launch of Necropolis. Don't miss League. out, though. You're going to miss so now's out. now's your last you're... chance to purchase them. You're going to miss Thank out. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Yo, are the bosses, are the bosses static? Because we saw the T17 maps had mods, right? Are the bosses static? It's going to be so shit if it's like a Cortex where you like have to fish for one that's easy to then fight, the easy one. I hope that... The map has mods, but then you go to the boss room, <laughs> no mods, and then it's static. Cause it's gonna suck big dick if they're not static. Because he is. God damn, damn. God damn.